So we know Caleb Williams is going to Chicago, right? Correct. Okay. Now that's what? It, that's happening. Now what? Then what happens? Well, I, I've just, you know, there's two different thoughts here. One is everything that you hear from talking to people around the league and the large, uh, vast majority of them expect Jaden Daniels to be the second pick. When I press them on that, it's not based off of any information they've got out of Washington. It's more their personal evaluation and they just expect that's what they're going to do. I've, I've, uh, just kind of through this process, I've known Adam Peters for 20 years and, um, I, I kind of I, I think about DQ and his background, and he's gone to a Super Bowl with Matt Ryan. So just trying to like put those together without any inside information, and I've just kind of pointed towards Drake May, you know, being that second pick through the entire process. So I'm in, in a weird place where that's kind of what I think is going to happen based off of just the information I have and studying the the people making the decision and what they're looking for. Um, but Man, I'm literally, I feel like sometimes just on an island of one right now because everybody uh, seems to expect that Jane Daniels will be the second pick. Who would you take if you were in their position? And just, just from flat out ability yeah. alone. Yeah, I would take Drake May. Um, and to me, I the, the reason, and I know that's, again, most people will have Jaden over him. Jaden played the best this year. If you want to just live in a one-year vacuum, Jaden Daniels played the best. Um he played better than Caleb did this year. Um, but to me, you're not drafting a year's performance. You're drafting the ability level of the player. And I've seen what Drake may could do last year with just a decent supporting cast. I mean, they weren't great at North mm -hmm. Carolina the year before, but they were decent. He had Josh Downs had at least an NFL wide receiver and he put up big, big numbers. And I get somebody who's a bigger frame guy. He's got more size, more physicality. I think that's going to bode well durability wise for him going forward. Um, someone who I think works more in the middle of the field and kind of the NFL is played in the mud, as you guys know, like there's not going to be guys running free all over the place. You've got to be able to throw us some anticipation and work in tight windows. And some of that, you know, he had to do because of who he was playing with and, and who they were playing against. So that to me is kind of my long winded answer of why I like Drake may that being said, I mean, I think I have Jaden Daniels one spot behind him on my, on my ranking. So there's a lot to love about Jaden Daniels and, uh, and his ability. I, I worry a little bit about with his narrow frame and some of the reckless style in which he plays, you know, how, how long that, that holds up that way. So that'd be one of my major concerns there. How much jockeying for position are you anticipating? And by jockeying for position, I mean, of course, teams looking to trade up. There are quite a few quarterbacks, as you've identified. Um, there's just a, a long list of quarterbacks in, in which teams find interesting. Are you expecting a lot of trades or attempted trades? You, you know what, Amy? I think to me it's like how they come off the board. I think everybody has their flavor that they would be willing to to be aggressive and go get. Um, you know, I... I the Minnesota Vikings and and talking to a lot of people around the league that they're identified as a Drake May team. So if Jaden Daniels goes to and New England has made it be known that at least, you know, Elliot Wolf said today they'd be maybe open to listening. He didn't rule it out by any stretch. I would think that the Minnesota Vikings would try and move heaven and earth to go get Drake May. I also know they do like JJ McCarthy, but then then we get into the difference between do you love him or do you do you like him? You know, mm -hmm. do you want to go all the way up there to three and make that all in godfather offer or are you more content to say let's just let this play out a little bit maybe if we have to trade up a little bit we'll do that or maybe we'll just you know stand pat here but as you both know like when you have a lot of quarterbacks there's different opinions mm -hmm. um and then people as you get deeper in the process the owners become involved and and the owner can look at that situation and say okay i can sell this like you get me the young quarterback that young quarterback represents hope um, and I can sell hope. So then, you know, you start seeing, you start seeing people that have said in meetings for months, we're willing to trade up to this point, but outside of that, that, that coffee's too rich. Like we're not going beyond that. They have a way of, of pushing past those limits. Once you get late in the process and the owner gets pretty involved. Wait, what owners get involved? Wait, wait, yeah, you wait, don't know you anything about, about that. Owners yeah, you don't know anything about that. Wait, yeah. my mind is blown. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try and paint the picture for you here. I don't know if you can even just imagine such a thing. Can't imagine but. it. Yeah, but if if Elliot Wolf is, I mean, I want to shake him and say, what are you kidding me? If a quarterback represents hope, why are yeah. they saying they're open for business? Like, what, what are they, insane? Get Drake May. Like, what's their problem? Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that I can think of there is, and, and I've referenced the Patriots through this whole draft cycle with this personal experience, which was, 
and calling the Charger games and going to New England last year and being able to juxtapose what I saw in that stadium versus what I had seen numerous other times in that building with the run that they were on and the juice and the energy in that place that was electric to go on there last year when it's raining, the stadium's half empty and they got shut out. And I'm like, this place, and I, that's when I kind of thought, okay, I think it's probably over for Belichick here just because you get to the point where they need they need some enthusiasm, they need some life, they need something you know to, to really energize this place. And a quarterback can do that. So if, if they're not going to take him there, my only explanation for that is, okay, well, they really like J.J. McCarthy. And they're comfortable, even if they had to trade back to 11 and got a huge haul um, from Minnesota, they would then have the ammunition to be able to come back up to, you know, five, you know, a team like the Chargers and come back up and and still get a quarterback. But if they go into next year and nothing against Jacoby Brissett, who's a, you know, a solid stopgap player, that's tough to sell. Um, that That's not, you know, hope has left the building at that point in time. Yeah, I, I think it's on 95 right now. Check out new episodes of What the Football with Susie Schuster and Amy Trask every Tuesday. Watch us on the Rich Eisen Show YouTube page or follow and listen wherever you get your podcasts.